All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today's uh, uh, our first, I guess, inaugural uh, Coffee with the Dean event uh, that we are going to be discussing a state of mobility, think, act, and inspire. Uh, my name is Fashad Futuhi, and I am Dean of the College of Engineering. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we had, of course, uh, limited our tra uh, traveling around the globe and meeting with alumni. And we thought uh, a good way to reach alumni is through these virtual meetings of Zoom. Uh, I can let you know that uh, classes are taking place as normal, but majority are online. We have about 20% of our classes that are face-to-face, -face, but the rest of them are online. We are all adopting the new world that we live in. And uh, our students are, I think, learning, continue progressing toward their degrees. We even had uh, our uh, recent uh, uh, career fair for our students, which was virtual. We had about 70 companies who were here to recruit our students, but virtually, uh, which went well pretty well. And we had also an event for Ford Day here on our campus. So we are trying to keep business as usual as much as possible. And um, we are adopting, as I mentioned. So this is another way for us to reach to you guys and try to start establishing a series of seminars uh, around topics that might be of interest to you. And uh, in recent conversations, my team, we discussed that uh, we will be probably theming our conversations around the United Nations um, 17 goals for sustainable development. Uh, so the first one that we have today is about mobility. Uh, the next one that we will be discussing in November, I believe November 18, which I would love you to invite you to attend, will be around global engineering education. And then uh, in January, we are focusing on water and sanitation and more to come later. And in each one of these one, we will invite some of our colleagues from the College of Engineering to join us, as well as invite others around the campus to join us and discuss some of the work that they are doing around um, some of the topics that we will select and talk about. And if you have any ideas about what topics you would like to hear from us to discuss, please share it with us and we will make sure to accommodate those as we go forward. So the mobility is the first area that we discussed, talk about, talk about today, uh, because again, it's a topic, a timely topic. It is uh, taking over our lives. Everything is these days are smart, uh, from a smartphone to a smart refrigerator to a smart microwave and a smart car and a smart city. And uh, mobility plays a big role around these uh, smart enterprises. And uh, with that, at Wayne State, we, uh, over the past several years, we have started recruiting faculty who are doing research around mobility, not in one specific discipline, but uh, in various uh, disciplines across the college. These are faculty in the Department of Computer Science, Electrical and Computer Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, Industrial Engineering, and uh, Computer Science. And we will continue recruiting more and more faculty in those areas. Next slide, please. Somehow, Stephanie, I'm not seeing my, the slides being moved forward. Um, I'm gonna do it my own here right now. So we have started uh, uh, a mobility initiative uh, in our college and we expanded across the campus because we believe mobility is not only an engineering discipline, it is impacting uh, many, many areas. And since Wayne State is a comprehensive university, we have uh, talked to our colleagues in business, law, medicine, liberal arts and sciences, pharmacy and so on to hear their work around mobility. So on April 15, we had a meeting of minds that uh, we did again virtual event, like similar to this one, invited our faculty across the campus to come and share their thoughts about mobility. And uh, we broke it down into four areas, education, transportation, health, and technology. And we, have, we had about 60 plus faculty from across the campus who participated in that uh, event. We recorded all that information. It's available at 
mobility.wayne.edu. I encourage you to visit that site and um, learn more about what other colleagues are doing besides engineering faculty. And also just last week, we launched a competition uh, for the entire campus called Mobility for All competition, which is uh, in four phases. Actually, it's five phases, if I'm actually four phases. The first phase was basically going talking to our community leaders in Detroit and greater Detroit area to learn about some of their challenges that they're facing and then see how mobility can help them solve some of those issues. So we gathered somewhere about over 30 uh, ideas that came across the uh, Detroit community and uh, beyond. And we broke it down in certain areas. We now broadcasted that to the entire fa staff, faculty, students, and staff of the college and, and the university. And we are hoping that students will be come up with some ideas uh, of how to address some of these challenges. So at the end of phase one, we will identify 10 groups that will be moving to the next phase, which is gonna be uh, basically taking those ideas and doing prototyping of those ideas. And the phase uh, two or three of these exercises then identify maybe uh, one or two or five of them to move to the next level, which is basically taking their ideas to the uh, community and implementing it. We have uh, received $50,000 support from the uh, Office of the Provost in exercising this uh, competition. And of course, more support will welcome because we don't know, we may get a lot of good ideas coming up from our students and faculty in addressing some of these areas. So again, this is focusing on uh, mobility. Also, as part of our uh, future campaign, the next capital campaign, we have uh, enhanced our existing strategic plan in the College of Engineering to close the skills gap with industry. And as part of that exercise, we have identified or we are identifying uh, clusters of faculty that have research, education, outreach programs around in certain areas. And mobility uh, was one of those areas that we created a center for advanced mobility, which is going to be a world-class mobility research and education center. And we partnered with Michigan Mobility Institute. And uh, we will hear more about that from Dr. Wee Song Shi, who's leading the area of mobility for our college and university. Also, uh, uh, these centers, mobility being one, uh, the goal of these centers are to have basic research, applied research, degree program offering, as well as professional development work and workforce development courses. So uh, recently we partnered with a company called Amesite, which is an AI-based uh, virtual uh, uh, classroom environment based in Ann Arbor, in offering uh, courses around mobility and advanced technology. These are all online courses, there are going to be six weeks courses that are around topics such as mobility, electric vehicle, uh, alternative technologies. And also we have courses around data mining, um, advanced manufacturing and so on. So I encourage you to visit go.wayne.edu warrior tech source. That is the name of some of these online programs under warrior tech source. And again, you can register there or learn more about what these courses are covering. And the first batch of these courses will be offered in November, I believe. The other thing we have done is mobility uh, graduate certificate program, which has started this fall. Again, this is a certificate program, which you can take those courses and count it toward a master's degree program if you're interested in pursuing a master's degree. We recently also launched a master in robotics in four, three areas, industrial automation, intelligent control, and smart mobility. Industrial automation is being housed in the Department of Engineering Technology. Intelligent control is housed in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And smart mobility is in the Department of Computer Science. And also several years ago, we have one of the first electrical drive vehicle engineering program in the country, which focuses on uh, electric vehicle technologies. And computer science 
is going to be soon launching. Uh, they've already started some of that courses in the area of a master's degree in concentration of autonomous driving. We have also partnered with the industry in some of these areas. So as you can see, we have a, a well versed of works around the mobility and the state of Michigan is becoming a hub for mobility. Today, I have several of my colleagues uh, that are gonna be presenting and talking about uh, research and education around mobility. Dr. Lee Song Chi from Computer Science, he will be talking about that. We're talking about Dr. Um, Steve Remius to talk about uh, in, uh, transportation. Uh, he's from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. And Dr. Yan Chao Liu from the Department of Industrial Engineering, who'll be talking about application of mobility. And also we invited one of our PhD students to talk to you about her experience and working in the area of mobility while being in Detroit at Wayne State and studying that, that Ms. C.D. Liu will be here. Also, I'm accompanied today with my colleagues from uh, uh, College of Engineering Development Office, uh, Chris Dyson, uh, Claire Brender, and Audrey Stephan. Again, with that, I would like to pass the uh, baton to Dr. Ri Song Shi. Thank you, Fashad. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, event. So my name is Wei Song Shi, a professor of computer science. I'm also the associate dean for research and graduate studies. Next slide. So, in addition to this uh, com very comprehensive that uh, you know, workforce and education program we're offering. So College of Engineering has a very active research and innovation activities in the space of mobility. So today I take this opportunity to share with you some of these ongoing projects. And I hope that this will stimulate more collaboration with our alumni like you. So since we started this uh, um, mobility oriented kind of research and there are several a visit, very visible grants that has been funded that uh, we are either a part of that, or some of them were leading that. For example, uh, last year, USDOT has uh, awarded eight um, centers around the nation focused on the autonomous uh, vehicle and the Detroit, leading by city of Detroit. So we, we are part of this autonomous vehicle testing for that uh, project. And basically, Wayne State is responsible for the urban settings. This is a perfectly um, that uh, for our campus and also city of Detroit. Also last e year, we partnered with uh, Navia, which is a French based, uh, Sarin ba uh, French uh, headquarters and uh, Sarin based in uh, Michigan. So we are one of the six teams winning the uh, Michigan Mobility Challenge. So the, the idea is that we are running this uh, Navia shuttle to provide these uh, services for the uh, North American International Auto Show. And unfortunately during the pandemic, this was canceled but we are still talking about that to maybe moving to October next year. And recently teaming up with uh, Georgia Tech, uh, West uh, Polytech, uh, WPI, and Maine, so we are being funded by NSF planning grant on Center for Wireless Spectrum Research. And this right now is, the goal is to, to build a national center on the wireless spectrum research. That uh, we are one of these uh, teams invited to compete for the last round. And that, that was uh, very, if being funded, that would be very significant because only one, one center will be funded nationwide. Uh, NSF will invest $25 million on this. So again, our strengths, the reason we are part of this team is on the wireless communication for the, uh, for the connected autonomous vehicles. So we also have um, a, a one of the colleagues receive the wireless communication for the long range, low power communication perfectly Feeding for the Michigan, for example, you have, you know, that uh, basically across the, the whole state of Michigan, the many places don't even have signals today. So that how you're going to use in this low power, long range, which can reach three miles away communication. One of my colleagues, Abu, is, is, uh, has been awarded on, on this uh, grant. And uh, we mo most recently, we, uh, um, that some of you probably saw the news that uh, uh, Michigan received about $7 million from uh, DOT on the uh, EV testing. So we are also part of that team. So those are the many you know, ongoing projects. And we also working with the community, submit several 
on projects right now is still pending, including on the DOE, on the electrical, you know, cyber attack on the uh, renewable energy, and the several projects with the uh, civic, you know, dealing with how to help the community address their mobility challenges. And uh, in addition to, to this, we also have several planned on, you know, on the uh, project. For example, that uh, NSF, Industry University Cooperative Research Center, in short, IUCRC, that uh, we focus on um, electrical connected and autonomous technologies. So myself is a PI and we've been notified two days ago, being invited to uh, submit the, uh, the moving to the next step. So this is like a several phase computation. So that, that was uh, ongoing. And uh, one of my colleagues is also writing, working with DSpace, I think is, is writing a MRI, you know, purchasing some equipment to here to the uh, university for the AV testing support our research and uh, our education. So right now we have been actively working with uh, more than 15 industry partners and we're looking for more. Hopefully that uh, some of you will be approaching us you know, after you hear these uh, exciting things are going here. Next slide. Um, next, I want to talk a little bit about my uh, own research and, and related to the, and also with several colleagues. So back to December 2017, to realize that uh, you know the next generation of the vehicle is not purely on mechanical anymore. So we there is more on this uh, you know related to as uh, Dean Farshad just uh, mentioned, you know civil engineer, electrical engineer, as well as you know computer science, and this we formed this uh, uh, um, the car lab working on the edge computing infrastructure, wireless communication, real time, and, and etc. <clears throat> so more details can be found on the uh, the car lab .org. And there, there are two figures showing at the bottom here. The one is a ongoing uh, pilot study uh, partner with Navia and uh, mobility inclusion is running a shuttle between Detroit Medical Center to the uh, Brooch Park senior homes. So we get the first hands experience that uh, how this AV, you know, autonomous vehicle is uh, you know, performed on the real public road. And there's a lot of uh, interesting things happening. So we plan to writing a paper about to share our experience. This is uh, one of the things I'm doing. The other thing is there is a, is a, um, a Chevy, it's a 1971 Chevy Suburban was donated by our former provost, uh, Whitfield. So we are looking, actively looking for partners uh, to see, help us to, you know, convert this to a pure electrical vehicle. So that um, any kind of support is, uh, well, you know, it's a welcome. So if you are interested in this, so we can talk to uh, Dean and also myself. Uh, next slide. So within the last couple of years, uh, in order to support the research and education, so my lab, we have developed and already open sourced a, uh, what we call the Hydro One, is, is an experimental research and education platform. Uh, it is, looks like a robot, but actually it's uh, come with all the functions provide, you know, required for an autonomous uh, vehicle. So right now, several of my colleagues are using this to write to support the uh, mobile social robots research and autonomous driving research, as well as uh, that, you know, how the human and the social uh, indoor delivery, for example, working in the uh, uh, hospital settings. And the key thing is, we made this open source. There are several other universities, such as University of Toronto, uh, Ohio State, Ohio State, and uh, University of Northern Texas. They already show the experience, uh, the interest to uh, purchase some of this. Well, as a matter of fact, I just registered a company to starting to uh, promote this uh, research and education platform to support the, uh, uh, the autonomous driving research, and we will be using this for our education program as well. So that uh, if you are taking our classes, you have a chance to deploy your real algorithms on top of this uh, platform. Uh, next slide. Now, in addition to this, we also, with the support from the university and the college, we, we also, uh, you know, integrated, I would say integrated at this point, uh, is the uh, high, uh, for the fusion-based uh, platform. So itself is a, uh, uh, 2017 for the fusion, but we have this uh, the sensors. Some of them were donated by our partners. For example, Continental donated the surrounding radars and the cameras, and the Velodile donated the, uh, the the lidar on top of that. And the Intel, Nvidia, they donated this uh, kind of you know computing equipment. So we also have have this that um, uh, the the platform. 
So if you are interested in this, you are more than welcome to come back and then to test drive this. Our goal originally was uh, that uh, by April, we, we, we should uh, we make at least some autonomous parking and the land changing functions available. But uh, during this uh, pandemic, so this was delayed a little bit, but we are still working, actively working on that. I think I move to the next slide that uh, in addition to our, you know, that uh, the research uh, on campus, we also very actively working with uh, the, our community. For example, working with the city of Detroit, that right now we have access to, you know, that uh, the about 460 um, intersections with all these camera, uh, not all of them have camera, but we know the traffic data, how this traffic can, you know, that, uh, will be impact on that. So this goes to the uh, infrastructure. So I will be naturally to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Stephen Ramirez, who is leading the uh, you know, smart infrastructure uh, re research. Uh, Steve is a citizen professor in the uh, civil and environmental engineering, and it's a rising star in the, uh, uh, in the infrastructure side. Uh, Steve? Awesome. Thanks, Wei Song. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks, Farshad, for, for hosting us today. And, and thanks, Wayne State, friends, family, alumni, and students, and faculty for, uh, for, for taking time out of your morning to, uh, to join us today. Um, my name is Steve Remius. I'm an assistant, faculty, assistant professor of civil and environmental engineering. Um, next slide, please. Um, so a little bit of introduction about myself and my research group. Um, we're a, a research group called the, the Transportation Research Group. Uh, we, uh, we operate out, out, of, uh, out of Wayne State University's engineering building, um, and we're focused on all aspects of, of transportation engineering. Um, we're, we're very aware that uh, the, the transportation engineering field is, is changing rapidly, and we're trying to develop uh, solutions that assist um, you know, the, the, cities, uh, the residents of the city of Detroit, um, drivers, uh, agencies, um, and, and anyone who deals with transportation engineering. Um, my research goal um, is to leverage modern data sets to solve transportation agency problems. As we, we develop um, connected and autonomous vehicles and uh, uh, larger technologies for uh, in intersections and, and infrastructure, um, what's really happening is we're getting kind of inundated with, with data. And, and what we're trying to do is, is take the, these large amounts of data, um, really we're, we're data rich and information poor. We're trying to take these large amounts of data and turn it into information um, that agencies and, and folks can use to, to, to have actionable items. So I'm excited to share a few of my uh, research projects with you today, um, one on smart infrastructure and then uh, a few other on scalable data solutions. Next slide. So uh, looking at the smart infrastructure side, um, you know, historically what, uh, what you know, transportation engineers, uh, you know, do is, is they rely on kind of uh, detectors, video detectors, and, and other things at the intersection. Uh, we partnered with MDOT a few years back to uh, pilot a signal performance measure system where we collect data from infrastructure um, in the field. One of the cool things that we're starting to work on now um, in a project that's been going underway is, is right out there, right outside of our building on Anthony, Wayne and Warren um, in the city of Detroit, we built a cabinet to um, install kind of the latest and greatest technologies um, to, to understand and, and, uh, and you know, realize the, the potential for some of these, these uh, tech solutions uh, to solve some of these transportation problems. Um, like I mentioned, you know, this, this signal, uh, automated signal performance measures uh, system, what they do is they collect um, any type of, of data that's coming from the intersection, whether it's detectors or when the signal changes, um, and it's taking and logging all of that information, and we're using that to uh, drive and, and optimize the intersection. Uh, next slide. Another thing that we're really interested in is, is scalable data sources. So we understand agencies are limited by uh, budget and resources, and, and as much as some of this technology is, is rapidly developing, um, if you think about the scale of the Michigan Department of Transportation, they have uh, 3,200 intersections or 3,200 signalized intersections. And, and if, if you were to develop a technology and wanted to install it tomorrow at all of these intersections, it would be really cost prohibitive um, to, to, to do that, you know, between labor, maintenance, et cetera. 
Um, so another thing we're looking at is kind of these scalable data sources. So everyone has their cell phones uh, and, and where they're you know, getting these, these GPS maps, whether it's Google or Waze um, or Apple Maps, where, where you're getting these, these um, uh, directions and current traffic, real-time traffic conditions. Um, one of the things that we're able to do is work with third-party vendors uh, to collect this data um, where we're not getting 100% penetration of, of uh, vehicles, but we're able to get a, a good sample. So you can see on that picture of the left, um, you can characterize traffic conditions with just a few uh, vehicles on the road network. And what we can do then is use this data or these data um, for, for performance measure reporting um, and, and really planning operations and, and kind of uh, strategizing, you know, where capital projects need to take place um, at the agency level. Um, next slide, please. So really, uh, you know, this, these, these archived data, this archived data, so as opposed to looking at this data in real time, um, you know, the archived data really provides these game-changing opportunities for agencies. Next slide. So what are we doing with it? Well, over the last three years, uh, we've created uh, the Freeway Congestion and Reliability Report, where we take this information and create a planning document such that MDOT, when they have their, their planning meetings and they're looking at the next five to 10 years of, of construction projects, they can, they can understand uh, where congestion is occurring. Um, and they can also use this to understand, you know, if we built a, a, a project or an infrastructure uh, a project, you know, whether we added a lane, um, or, or put some type of intelligent transportation system out there, what the impact of that, of that, uh, that installation was. Next slide, please. So here's an example um, for those of you in the Ann Arbor area, uh, the flex route on, on US 23, um, we were able to use this, this data, uh, the, the data from uh, this, this crowdsource pro vehicle data uh, to, to understand the performance. And if you look at the, you know, the, the big, on uh, upper left there, you see that big spike of, of pick your number somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes of, of delay uh, pre-construction pre on, on US 23. Um, and after they built the flex route, which was a, a, a external uh, shoulder, hard paved shoulder where uh, vehicles could drive on during peak hours, that, that congestion went away. Um, using some of this information, the, the DOT is now um, expanding the, the kind of the, um, the scope of this project in, in terms of flex routes. And they're, they're, they have the flex route tool in their toolbox and they're starting to look for other places that could, they can implement uh, and, and, and use these, these flex routes. Um, next slide, please. Another cool thing that we did uh, as part of a Federal Highway Administration project, we, um, we worked with uh, work, zone, uh, work zone folks, so agent, uh, agencies who, who have work zones on interstates, which is every agency, um, and we developed an open source tool um, that summarizes the performance of work zones um, in terms of mobility. So uh, really a lot of questions stem from when can workers be out in the field? Um, and, you know, if, if we do, you know, X, whether it's close a lane or close two lanes or, or you know, put out signage, um, what's the impact on traffic? So we created a tool um, for agencies nationwide to use that will, uh, that will leverage this probe data um, to, uh, to, to you know, provide information for these decision makers. Um, next slide. So the next cool stuff that we're working on is, is looking at uh, vehicle trajectory data and or this is the data that you would imagine comes from uh, connected vehicles, um, GPS waypoints from individual vehicles. And our main theme, our main question was, can we identify poor performing intersections um, without any infrastructure? And, and you can see here, uh, this is actually a, a, a vehicle that was driven through Detroit. Um, those red lines across the graph there are uh, intersections, and you can see, looking at this, the, the vehicle, this one individual vehicle stopped at every intersection um, on that corridor. Obviously, that creates some unhappy drivers, um, you know, from emissions and noise and, and other things, uh, delay. Um, there's, there's a lot of problems with that. Next slide, please. So what we're doing here, um, if, if, so what we're doing here is we're taking this information that we have, this, this waypoint information from these connected vehicles, and we're actually looking 
Um, and, and this is an example in, in Holland, Michigan, where we, where we had some data and we let all of these connected vehicles, every trace that we had of, an, of a corridor go at once. And so you can see the southbound moving traffic on the left, the northbound moving traffic on the right. I um, mean, we're able to kind of understand where vehicles are stopping on this corridor. Um, and that gives us the insights to uh, kind of target uh, signal retiming projects or infrastructure projects such that um, we can improve some of these uh, some of these signal timings. Um, next slide. So what that data looks like, and and you kind of got that picture from the last slide, which is these these autonomous lat long uh, uh, individual waypoints for each vehicle, and and you know you can kind of trace their their path through the intersection. Next slide. And as part of a DOE project, what we we're able to do is is look at the the city of Columbus and actually characterize 10 corridors um, using this information and find the hot spots that they need to focus on to, to retime their signals, um, which is exciting because it, it was zero infrastructure costs um, and, and um, can really scale uh, not only uh, citywide, statewide, but it can also scale nationwide. Next slide. And just to wrap up here, so we know transportation engineering is uh, is changing, um, and so we have a, a really awesome civil engineering transportation staff that that looks at transportation equity, um, transportation safety. Um, I work at work work with transportation um, operations. Um, we know that transportation engineering is changing both technology modes, population, environment, economy, um, and we're trying to look for. Uh, problems that we can use these new technologies and new data sets to uh, to solve. Um, so the the goal of transportation engineering is really remain the same, you know, safely efficiently move people and goods. But Wayne State wants to be the the forefront of, of finding these new solutions that agencies and operators can use um, to improve their transportation. Um, next slide. I think I just have some sources, and I'll pass it back to Wei Song uh, for uh, for the introduction to the next speaker. All right. Thank you, Steve. And uh, you just hear that uh, Wayne State is at the forefront of the underground, you know, transportation. And in addition to that, you know, mobility is not limited to just on the ground. So actually, we also actively looking for that the way how you're gonna using, you know, the space, you know, the drones and etc. For the food delivery, those will be the next big thing. As you see, many news about Amazon, uh, Walmart. They are talking about you know how to changes this, uh, the future, the delivery of, of the food, maybe all, as well as the transportation. So I'm very glad to introduce one of my colleagues at uh, industry and system engineering, Dr. Yan Chao Niu, who is uh, um, also a star in this space. So let's uh, welcome uh, Yan Chao. Uh, thanks, Wei Song. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, when we imagine mobility solutions for the future, the largely unexploited airspace and rooftop space shouldn't be overlooked. Uh, advanced Air Mobility, or AAM, aims to improve people's daily lives by significantly reducing the time and cost of moving people and goods in and around cities. Uh, the vehicles are electric, lightweight, and capable of vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL. Uh, the city infrastructure will be upgraded with bold designs, uh, for instance, building rooftops would be converted to uh, accommodate air taxis and uh, maybe small uh, vertical takeoff and landing airports would be built in future smart mo mobilities, as you see in the picture. Uh, designing and implementing the new infrastructure involves many technical and policy decisions. Supporting these activities requires uh, joint efforts from academia, industry, and government. Uh, in addition to the ground uh, infrastructure, AAM uh, also calls for a new generation of air traffic control capabilities to handle the unprecedented density and complexity of unmanned air traffic. Uh, developing such capabilities requires interdisciplinary research, uh, invention of new modeling tools and new solution methods. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the idea of human carrying drones such as air shuttles and air taxis may still sound too remote to you. Uh, in contrast, goods delivery using drones may be a more attainable first step toward AAM. Research shows that 38% of all personal trips, that is 80 billion trips per year in the US, fall in the category of shopping and errands. In other words, 
the sole purpose of such trips is for fetching something lightweight from a short distance away. If we can deliver the needed stuff to people quickly and on demand, then many costly time wasting, polluting, and in some cases dangerous personal trips can be eliminated uh, compared to conventional methods for last mile delivery, such as using trucks, cars, and electric mopeds. Drone delivery is much more efficient in many aspects. Uh, drone, drone based delivery is projected to be able to reduce fuel and labor costs by 90%, reduce delivery time by 80% and enable contactless point-to-point -point delivery with zero CO2 emission. Uh, next slide, please. Because of the limited size and endurance of small drones, the benefit of drone delivery can only be materialized by large-scale deployment. Uh, and this presents a multitude of technology challenges. My research aims to address these challenges using operations research, mathematical optimization and machine learning. Uh, for example, we are designing vehicle routing algorithms that can optimally match customer orders that arise randomly over time and space to uh, available drones at the moment and simultaneously optimize the drone's flight path. Uh, we are building resource optimization models for robust ground, uh, ground support networks. And we are developing remote diagnosis programs based on IoT technology to enhance flight safety. Uh, the, the picture on the top left uh, shows a, a sample of different operations research and machine learning questions that my team is trying to answer via uh, fundamental research. Uh, the picture on the top right illustrates a, a multi-agent air traffic management architecture that enables multiple fleets of drones to navigate a shared airspace safely and efficiently. And the picture on the lower right is a screenshot of our prototype cell phone app or iPad app uh, implementing this uh, above ar architecture for on-demand food delivery scenarios. Uh, next slide. Um, our fundamental research is rooted in operational realities. In our lab, we have built a small fleet of drones from the ground up to understand how drones work and to get a hold of the real challenges in drone-based delivery operations. Uh, these physical platforms help us ensure that our mathematical models and algorithms work well, not only in simulated environments, but also on real UAV fleets. Uh, along the way, we have also developed uh, novel hardware modules, for example, uh, the, the black box in the lower right picture uh, is a lightweight onboard computer uh, with 4G LTE connectivity, uh, which can simultaneously talk to the onboard autopilot and the cloud the cloud based fleet controller. So this device can be uh, installed on both UAVs and ground vehicles in a plug and play fashion. Next slide. Uh, along with other team members in the uh, NSF-funded i program, uh, I'm in the process of translating the technology innovation into commercial values. Uh, we have started a company called Prompt, aiming to provide end-to-end -end meal delivery solutions. We have developed prototype systems as shown in these pictures, and we have been uh, conducting virtual and physical trials. Uh, I would welcome your inquiries about uh, collaborative research partnerships and other opportunities with us. Next slide. Uh, okay, thank you for your attention. Uh, feel free to scan the QR code to connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Yan Chao. And um, our next is, as many of you know that, you know, Michigan is in the, uh, in the transition from the traditional auto industry to the mobility. So as evidenced by the, in the last July, Governor Wichmer just uh, uh, created a new office on the mobility and the electrification and appointed the Trevor Powell as the first chief, uh, you know, uh, chief mobility officer at the state level in the nation. You know, uh, actually last Friday, we are very happy to have um, a Trevor to give us the talk at the Women Ability Distinguished ser uh, Series. And uh, there are many students and there are even, uh, you know, um, people is looking for 
if they're looking for mobility, they actually is looking for to come to us, you know, um, William State is in the heart of Detroit, I'm here to study. So today I'm very happy to, uh, uh, and also a pleasure to introduce uh, that uh, one of our current PhD students, uh, Ms. Sidi Lu, to share, uh, share some of her experience. Sidi received her uh, bachelor degree from Xidian University, which is a uh, partner university with Wayne State. And since, uh, since uh, Farshad and uh, we built this uh, three plus two collaboration with Xidian University, we have received more than 50 students from that from Xidian. And the city was uh, uh, one of them. And she completed her master's degree last year and now is doing PhD and working with uh, GM and as an internship right as of now. So city, go yeah. ahead. Yes, yeah, thank you, Professor Shi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Sadie Lu, and currently I'm a fifth-year PhD student at Wayne State University under the guidance of Professor Wei Song Shi. And in 2015, I was a visiting student at UCR and received offers from the UCR and the USC, but I decided to work with uh, Professor Shi and join the car lab at Wayne State University, which is located in the Motor City, uh, Detroit. And because of the location advantages and the close cooperation with the mobility industry collaborators and the National Research Lab, uh, Winston University provides many uh, project-based uh, training using the mobility principles and technologies to solve the real-world challenges, So, which is very helpful for students to find an uh, idea and a competitive job or intern opportunity in the mobility era. And in the partnership with the industry collaborators, so our lab aims to design and implement uh, enabling technologies such as uh, uh, edge computing communication systems and to realize the vision of the uh, connected and autonomous uh, driving. And take me as an example. So I have the opportunity to work with the Lokea Bayer Lab and the General Motor. And all my research projects are uh, based on the real world data sets, such as the electrical vehicle battery data sets and the autonomous vehicles video data sets. And those real world data sets are the keys to the related uh, research, including the electrical vehicle uh, battery failure prediction, um, collaborative learning on the edges for connected vehicles, and also the virtual uh, land detection prediction under the challenging scenarios. And since the, uh, this summer, I have become a, a general model research and development intern uh, from June 2020 to uh, the end of this year. So I have joined the vehicle health management group of the vehicle system research lab in GM. And my work is to uh, develop initial work supporting enhanced land detection prediction under challenging scenarios with the advanced uh, driver assistance systems of the super cruise vehicles loss, losses and land detection. So uh, in short, I have uh, learned a lot through studying in Winstead University, and I believe the Winstead University will provide us a perfect education platform in terms of the mobility research. Uh, thanks. Uh, so let's uh, pass back to Dr. Shi. Okay, well, thank you, Sudi. Um, I think I will pass, according to the agenda, now is to go back to uh, Dean of Tuhi, right? Oh, wonderful, thank you. Thank you all uh, for participating uh, and sharing with our alumni, friends, and colleagues uh, about the work that you're doing around mobility. And uh, we have till 11 o'clock, so we have about 12 more minutes left uh, you're more than happy to stay online if need to be, but those of you who want to take off, I can tell you that we have recording this session so we can make it available to you to review it and uh, PowerPoint as well. And there's a lot of links to some of the research that my colleagues are doing. But let me, um, since we have time, I just wanted to ask one quick question and then open it up to the attendees to see if they have any question for us uh, with the remaining time left. I know that I mentioned earlier in my uh, presentation uh, that we have a competition that we launched uh, last week, Mobility for All. And one area of that mobility, we received a lot of information from uh, Detroit community and 
greater Detroit area. And transportation was one of the major focus. A lot of uh, needs for transportation, uh, public transit, bicycle infrastructure, walkability, and, and technology such as connected autonomous vehicles. What was the other major focus of this conversation among uh, the Detroit uh, community? Uh, again, focusing around social justice. Uh, can you share with me, Song or Steve, uh, some of those areas? I, I believe community health and planning was one of them. And um, can you share with me what the, uh, we heard from the community? Sure. Steve, maybe you... Yeah, absolutely. So we, we really, um, we broke it up into two sections, as, as you mentioned, Farshad, you know, the transportation section, which is, which is really looking at the, you know, the public transportation and getting people from point A to point B. But, but I think the, the other section was, was very much um, access and health. Um, and it was, it was access that uh, folks in the city felt unsafe um, using some of this this public transportation, and and so we want to provide you know safe um, access, Dr. and then we also well, so we want to provide uh, you know safe access to uh, to the, these public transit uh, transportation, um, and then also um, access to food, access to healthcare, um, and really access to uh, to anything in the city. Um, you know, both culture, you know, the DIA and museums, as well as religious, uh, uh, re religious uh, ceremonies and, and, and other, um, other things that, that, that folks need access to in, in the city. So, so I think the, the other section was really that, that public health and, uh, and, and access, which was the other kind of big area of, of concern. Yeah. Of, of this Thank you, Steve. I can see that, uh, again, all of these are detailed in our mobility.wayne.edu. Uh, access again, safety was one issue. Access to food, access to healthcare, and access to education, employment, and community engagement. So again, uh, we are hoping that our students and faculty can come up with some solution uh, for the phase one, which is the design; phase two, which is uh, development and small scaling, scale testing, and then uh, phase three is the scaling and really implementing the solution in the community. And again, we are looking for partners to support us financially and also with if the student need access to some hardware and so on to join us uh, in this effort. And uh, we will probably make this to be an annual event uh, as we go forward. With that um, in mind, uh, let's see, we have only a few more minutes left here. Let's open it up to the uh, attendees to see if they have any questions for us uh, that we can try to answer. Uh, Dean Fatui, can I say, say something real quickly? Oh, this please. is Dewan Woods with Director of Corporate Relations. Go ahead, please, Duan. Yeah, this, this is an excellent, by the way, this is a fantastic presentation. And I just want to really thank you for your leadership as the uh, really the, the visionary who collaborated with the Michigan Mobility Institute. It looks like Jessica Robinson is on this, uh, on this session. And you and Wei Song um, and Steve Remus, all the work that you all are doing in this space, I believe position Wayne State for really the leadership role in Detroit with corporations who want to advance Michigan as the number one global leader in mobility research. So I just want to pass that along to say our industry partners, our Detroit homecoming expats are all excited about the opportunity to work with Wayne State and, uh, and you and your leadership. So just want to pass that along. Thank you, Duan. And as you know, um, again, the vision for the college is to be known as a college that improves quality of life and um, to education, innovation, entrepreneurship. And again, this is what my colleagues are doing, correct? Thank you to the work that they're doing. And I think uh, that makes us all feel better uh, taking uh, the education that we have, bring it to the community and serve the community that we work and live there. Let's hear the other people who might have questions here. I, I have a question and maybe comment, uh, really. Yeah, I am Priya Prasad and I graduated in 73, worked at Ford for 35 years. I've been retired now for quite a while. Uh, I was involved in, when I was at Ford, uh, in what was called the World Business Council on Sustainable Development. It had a lot to do with mobility. So for mobility to, to be sustainable over the years, uh, 
I think the road safety is very important. Uh, right now, we are talking about uh, about 1.3 million people dying every year on the roads, uh, and a lot of them are getting injured. And uh, a lot of in many countries, you know, especially in countries where economy is developing, a lot of people end up becoming penniless uh, because of the care that they have to take, take, you know, for people who are injured. What I have not heard today, by the way, I mean, I'm really impressed with all the presentations. What I have not heard is that social aspect, you know, of mobility. Uh, and there is a lot of work that took place uh, while I was at Ford. Uh, and safety, road safety was something that we picked up on and we did a lot of projects in developing countries. I, I think that has to be brought in somehow in your deliberations. Thank you, Dr. Prasad. I, I know that you led uh, port safety uh, for many years and uh, I appreciate it. It's a very interesting question. Again, uh, as I mentioned earlier in my presentation that Wayne State is a comprehensive university and we made mobility not to be only technology and engineering. On purpose, we talked about uh, bringing this to campus community and our School of Social Work very much engaged and involved with us in some of these areas. And, uh, social justice is what we feel like mobility can address because yeah. the first thing when we talk to the community is to get access to food, health and be safe, we need to see how mobility can help us. We don't have the answers yet, but we are opening it up to our students and faculty to see if they can bring up some ideas in front. And we are learning from this exercise. As I said earlier, I'm hoping that we can continue a year round about this area of mobility and try to see how we can integrate and improve quality of life. So it's not gonna be perfect in year one, but year two will be better. And we need partners to help us uh, and expand our uh, vision and horizon in this area. And I mean, again, you mentioned about uh, countries who are developing. So the solutions that we have here, uh, maybe in our next uh, webinar that we have talking about global engineering education, we can talk about how we can take the solutions that we have here, can deploy it in other countries. Can it be done? Is it adoptable? The traffic signal that Dr. Remy has talked about, is that going to be okay in India or in China or other places like that uh, or in Nigeria? So we need to uh, really expand our horizon and see if we can make it happen. Uh, but again, thank, thank you. you for your excellent question. Sure, uh, thank, you thank you very uh, much. Thank you. I have, I believe, uh, Joseph Peter, you have a question? Yeah, I do, Dr. Fatui. Thank you. Um, you. The, um, my questions are around the adoption. Um, I assume it's not going to be a big bang. It's going to be sort of incremental. And if it is going to be an incremental adoption, I, I'd just like uh, maybe give us some hints of what the first um, initiatives might be. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I should ask my colleagues, uh, Song, Steve, Yan Hao, share some lights on that. Wait, Wei-Sang, are you? Oh. Yeah, I give the, uh, Yan Chao, do you want to say something? Uh, sure, uh, adoption, uh, I, for me, I interpreted as <laughs> uh, the adoption of drones in daily lives. And I, I saw questions from a uh, private message that uh, uh, how about noise emission? Uh, how about bird strikes? And these are really important uh, topics uh, that are not, uh, uh, discuss in the mass among the masses among the public but also among the the experts uh, when i attended the, for example faa uas symposium or the auvsi exponential conferences where uh, uh, experts in the uas space gather uh, those are important topics and there's uh, for my i share a few thoughts for adoption of drones when you consider uh, uh to avoid you know drone uh, air air uh, bird strikes, maybe new technology like a uh, uh, bird uh, uh, expelling uh, technology may be developed, or when you uh, you uh, think that uh, noise is a big concern, uh, maybe uh, 
the uh, better prop propelling technology and better battery uh, should be developed. These are hardware barriers still uh, in this industry. So for adoption of drones uh, use in daily life, that's my perspective. Okay, so for your question on the autonomous driving, that uh, the reason I asked Yan Chong to answer it first is because that uh, I think it's uh, really scenario driven. So for example, drones that does have their own, you know, challenges to, to be adopted. Um, I, you know, because I'm, as I mentioned earlier that uh, right now we are, students are running this autonomous shuttle between Detroit Medical Center and the Bruce Park. In the last two months, we experienced a lot of interesting things we have never seen before. Pick an example. You know, if the, the company already uh, using geofence already decided that uh, poor faculty have mapping to run on the, uh, on the road between, you know, has been a fixed road. But what happened is we continuously run into the, uh, the work zones. You know, one day, if, if, the, if the workers put in the uh, contract people are putting a work zone, a coin, orange coin in front of that, and then the, the autonomous shuttle will be stopped here because they, have, they never see this before. So there's a lot of uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, interesting challenges here. But my quick uh, answer to you is, I do believe in some scenarios, this will be moving pretty quick. For example, for indoors, for the, the indoor delivery, and also one of our nominees, uh, 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 Chris Andrews from Prada Miller, they have been working with uh, the company uh, you know, for, the, for the indoor, the disinfect spray machine you know, for, the, for the airports. So this is a perfect scenario that uh, you can start to run this uh, probably as soon as possible. I, I believe that um, based on our last conversation, they are start spinning off a new company working on that. Because all the airports need to be uh, disinfected after you know, the you know, crowd there. So this could be quickly being adopted. And also for the fleet, they might be also in, you know, incrementally in a fixed small campus, like a golf course, in a, in a, in a small in a campus, like a Wayne State. You know, maybe we, we will, we, I'm actually, we are actively working with a company trying to uh, deploy a small shuttle running across the campus and uh, to connect the, you know, our business school, Tech Town, Wayne State, as well as the uh, medical school. So hopefully you will be have uh, you know kind of experience that. So I wanted to acknowledge a couple of kind comments in the chat. Uh, one is from Linda Lord, who mentioned that she feels these technological changes would be very useful in Houston, and also for um, from Kalpna Yendlery. Um, about the initiatives and impressive research going on. And I'd like to invite either of you to add comments if you wanted to. Thank you. And also going back to Peter's question. So the autonomous driving adaptation, as, as you know, there are five or six levels and level zero, no driving, level one driver assistant, partial driving automation and conditional driving automation high driving automation and, and full driving automation. So I believe some, we have seen examples of those one ex currently in um, the current vehicles that are on the road, correct? They can do certain things. Tesla is one example. Many of the cars nowadays that they have self-parking, they have a lot of safety features that are added to the vehicle, try to avoid collisions in many form and shape. And to get to the fully automated, uh, in a, we require to be really uh, advanced in AI technologies, computer vision technologies, and being able to detect certain conditions that we have not um, predicted in our, uh, in our algorithms. So uh, to get to the fully autonomous technology, uh, we need to have perfect roads, which are very smart, and uh, vehicles that can communicate with the roads and the pedestrians and so on. Uh, that integration takes some time. And um, again, maybe in certain environments, those will be perfect solutions, uh, but I doubt that this is gonna be something that could be done uh, in, in the near term, a fully autonomous vehicles out on the road. So, and we are adopting, uh, by the way, how to use these technologies. And that is another reason I mentioned, this is uh, not only about deploying technologies, but how people adopting and how that changed people's lives. Those need to be studied too. Correct, and that is the reason we are working with our colleagues across the campus to look at some of these issues. Correct, 
uh, we have colleagues from history, anthropology, uh, social works, and so on, working with us in addressing these things. And as Dr. Uh, Prasad mentioned, road safety is uh, of most importance. And uh, putting a vehicle on the road, we need to make sure that uh, we go from point A to B safely. And that's what autonomous technology is going to promise us that it's going to happen. All right. Uh, I think we're past our time by five minutes. Um, do you still have more questions coming? I wanted to acknowledge that um, we have Vivek Jayakamal on the call with us today, who is with AVL Testing Systems, and they are doing some impressive work with um, mobility. And again, we certainly would love to partner with them as part of a center, uh, Advanced Center for Mobility. We need partners. As a matter of fact, Wayne State, um, uh, maybe I've mentioned that in my past presentations, purchased a building a few years ago, which focuses on the building was built for the purpose of doing alternative energy. And we are working on energy and mobility in that space. And we are inviting industry partners to join us in that space to do collaborative research. And I think centers of uh, uh, mobility will allow us to do that and that we learn from each other. And our students also learn to better prepare for jobs of the future, engineers of the future. Okay, thank you. And I see that uh, Peter is um, thanking us for uh, good, good, glad to hear it from you, Peter. And again, uh, I think at this time, I would like to invite you again to our November 18. Uh, uh, Coffee with the Dean's event, which is, uh, is focused around global engineering education. And I invite you to share your comments and feedbacks with our team. And if you have any topics or ideas that you would like us to share, we are more than happy to do so and come back and, and have events like this for you. And uh, again, with that in mind, I wish all of you a safe and healthy uh, day ahead. And thanks again. Take care, everyone.